The Goat House is back after the Monday Night Football doubleheader, breaking down how I think each NFL team played in week four. I'll be placing every single team in tiers, and I will be giving them grades along the way here. Let's take a look at what we got for week four. And here's our Panthers tier of week four. And I will say the Panthers tier, the name of it could change next week, depending on a couple outcomes. The Panthers play the Bears. A winnable game for the Panthers, but let's say they don't even win. Let's say they play a good game, and then you have the Patriots and Dolphins, two teams that find themselves in this tier. They play each other next week. The loser of that game, depending on the Panthers, how they play, they could become this tier. So the Panthers, once again, two weeks in a row, even though they lost this week, do not make their own tier. The Cardinals, Patriots, Eagles, and Dolphins do. The Dolphins just played against the Titans. Man, the defense started off playing with high mo a high motor in that game, but it kind of fell apart quickly after that. I know they had guys out, Titans missing their best player, Jeffrey Simmons, and just couldn't couldn't get anything going. Run defense started off all right, but it fell apart. Everything fell apart, so just a disaster. He thought, you know, playing against who we ranked 32 going into the week, they had a chance at home, prime time, but... But no, not even, not really, not even close. Even at halftime, when it was nine to three, you could feel it. Like the Titans were completely outplaying them. Uh, the Eagles, I know they were missing a bunch of guys on offense, so I thought about kind of giving them a little bit of a pass and put them in the D tier. But for several reasons, I did not. First off, they didn't. I know they were without some star receivers and Lane Johnson, but you think Hurts and Barkley and Barkley ran all right. But you think because the playmakers they still have. And they still have a good offensive line, or at least supposed to. They'd be able to get a first down before they're down 24 points. That's one thing. And they were beat up on offense, not defense. The defense was giving up points rapidly. You know, right the game was over right away. So against a beat up Bucks team, so they belong in the Panthers tier. The Patriots, much like last week, they are looking like who we thought they were going to be. We ranked the Patriots last in this first power rankings heading into the year, and they didn't look like that the first two weeks. The last two weeks, they look like it. They're in the bottom tier. And the Cardinals should have played much better at home against a struggling defense. And they couldn't play well on either side of the ball. But offensively, they're, offensively with the offense line and Murray holding on the ball too long, that was the most disappointing part. So these were the worst teams of the week. Here's your D tier. And the next video will be power rankings. Some people confuse and think these are power rankings. Essentially, I guess they are power rankings for the week based on how they're played. But the next video, power rankings video after that, will be our week five picks. So join us, turn notifications on. D tier, Browns. They were up 10 nothing against a beat up, you know, starless Raiders team. And they couldn't hold on. They let, you know, obviously let them come back. And they had a chance at the end. But, I mean, Offensive line's the worst in football. It's brutal. I mean, you got sloppy play all over. I mean, Watson's not playing great, but he probably is taking too much heat for this last game. I thought he was okay besides holding on to the ball and taking a sack on the last play. Cooper even dropping the ball, resulting in interception. You know, the defense couldn't hold on after the first, uh, you know, portion of the game. So, given the circumstances, they should have been much better. And the Jets, I mean, the defense played well. I mean, they had Bo Nix held to negative seven passing yards at the end of the first half, but I do think a bit of it was because the rain... Uh, you know, in the second half, they weren't quite as good, but the defense overall played well. The Broncos only scored 10 points, but the Jets, you know, at home, can't run the ball, can't do anything. Play calling was bad, can't execute, sloppy. Uh, you know, at home against the Broncos, a team that typically isn't, isn't good stopping the run. Offensive line was bad, uh, you know, so they belong, a uh, major upset, so they belong in the D tier. The Bills, yeah, the Bills got their ass beat big enough where they could be in the Panthers tier. I don't know. When I watched them this week, even though they got their ass kicked and I watched the teams in the Panthers tier, I don't quite think they're, you know, they played a bad matchup in Baltimore, really good team on Sunday night. Yeah, they were really bad. They It really felt like they were going to come back until that strip. I know that's weird to say because they were still down by a lot, but until that strip sack. I just don't, didn't get the feeling that they were quite as bad as the teams below them. So only three teams in the D tier this week. Quite a few, well, four in the Panthers tier. A lot of teams in the C tier. The Saints find themselves here. And I thought about this, you know, could the Saints almost have made that B, C tier? Yeah, almost, because you could argue, you could argue they outplayed the Falcons. It was some sloppy play, maybe some fluky things that happened. You know, the Falcons didn't score a ton on offense. They were scoring special teams and defense right off the bat. That was their first two touchdowns. So that was kind of the case for the Saints being a tier higher, and they almost won the game given the sloppiness. But the sloppiness is getting to me here. I, I mean, and the offense has not been able to, to execute through, you know, fully throughout the game. And But going back to that sloppiness, 
usually what, what do we see in the first two weeks, three weeks sometimes? We see teams kind of lying to us, not showing who they actually are, and we see teams being very, very sloppy. The Saints gave us one of those things in the first couple weeks. Look like the best team in football. People got a little too high on them. Then they come back down to earth. They weren't even sloppy at that point. Now they're sloppy and they're losing games. So that's not sitting well with me. Kind of show, you know that showing in in this game in week four is what's not sitting well with me. So put them in the C tier. Steelers almost made a comeback. I mean, good to see Fields getting some production through there, even though he had a really bad turnover. It wasn't for you know taking themselves out of field goal range and, and, and fumbling the ball. If it wasn't for that, maybe they would have won the game. But other than that, he was very. it was good to see offense, the offense getting going. But, man, they were getting outplayed right from the get-go in this one. I mean, they were getting dominated early. They kind of came back. I know Flacco came in and made some good throws, but Richardson was the bad matchup for them, his ability to run on them. And, uh, and they stopped the run a little better once he came out, but they couldn't stop it off the rip. You know, so they were getting dominated in this game from the start. They probably would have been D or Panthers tier, but because they came back and got a little bit of production on offense. I mean, Najee wasn't running well. That was surprising against a weaker Colts run defense with no DeForest Buckner. Packers were a tough one to tier because, all right, the way they started this game, they're a Panthers tier. They're bottom tier for sure. And then they come back and they have a ton of production against a good defense. And and even with things not going their way, they still, they still could have, you know, they kind of had a chance in this game. You know, so... That made me want to bump them up a little bit, but I mean, they they couldn't help themselves with the sloppiness, the turnovers. It felt like oh, they had a shot. All right, turnover. They got a shot. No turnover. And it's like, so we can't really put them any higher in the C tier. Uh, but Love just came back. They need Alexander back too. Uh, the Packers will get going at some point. Panthers find themselves in the C tier, so two two tiers above the Panthers tier. And like I said, if they play okay against the Bears next week, possibly the loser of that Patriots Dolphins game, could that that could be the new name of that Panthers tier. But hey, the Panthers at least they were explosive on offense. They were able to do some damage Def- defensively. They were bad. I mean, if they would have just punched it in from the one yard line and started the game, it could have been a whole different game. But yeah, at least they were explosive on offense, so you couldn't completely flunk them here. The Rams thought about the Rams too because that. For a chunk of this game, they were out playing the Bears. They were constantly in the Bears' territory. It felt like, even while they were losing at halftime, it felt like, all right, yeah, the Rams are the better team here, right? But they just consistently couldn't get the ball in the end zone. And then the defense started to fall apart. Big, big run, something the Bears haven't been able to do, you know, from midfield wide open. So they got a little sloppier as the game went on there. So they kind of, you know, earlier in the game, probably would have been BC tier, dropped down to C. The Giants, you know, winnable game for them. Neighbors was awesome. Wandale Robinson was awesome. You know, if Jones hits a little bit more throws or gets them, you know, more on time, then maybe they win the game. Uh, you know, so I thought about them a higher tier, but you know, they missed those throws. You know, it was a winnable game. They couldn't, they couldn't execute. The Cowboys are atrocious stopping a run, and really, they couldn't really run the ball that well. It actually relied on Daniel Jones, you know, his arm, and he could have hit some more throws. And I did think the Cowboys, if they really needed to, like if it came down to it, to it, it felt like they could move the ball pretty easily. They were kind of hitting the brakes a bit. Uh, and it did feel like they kind of, at the same time the Giants having a chance, it did feel like the Cowboys, you know, won by more, could have won by more. So after more consideration, kind of dropping them down in the C tier rather than, than BC there. But uh, yeah, a lot of teams in that C tier. BC tier, the Falcons, who did beat the Saints in a nail biter. They they win at the end with that Young Way Ku field goal, clutch, clutch field goal. Hated the play calling right before that. Um, you know, just taking a deep shot, deep shot, deep shot until it's all right, let's kick a field goal. Like there was no thought of getting a little bit of yards to make to make uh, the field goal a bit easy for your star kicker, but he still makes it. Uh, and they very well could have lost the game. I mean, they kind of got lucky with the Shahid. I don't know what the hell he was doing on that punt return. Um, you know, the pick six, I mean, that was a big time play by them. I guess they earn it, but I, I expected a little bit more on offense, but at least they moved the ball when I, I guess when it mattered there and they still got the job done. And I do feel like they might be a better team than their record shows, but they very easily could have lost that game. There was a portion where the Saints probably outplayed them, and but they were the Saints were just a little too sloppy, so the Falcons just, just squeaked by. You know, with the sloppiness of the Saints, you got to win that game. It's a shame that it kind of came down in the last second, but the, 
they got they did get the job done. So maybe this is the highest they could have been this week. And the Chiefs, I mean, they were outplayed by the Chargers for a bit, but they clutched up and made plays when things were going south and Rasheed Rice gets carded off. They, they were the better team in the second half, but the Chargers were extremely beat up. But the, the Chiefs defense did play very, very well and, and just both sides of the ball doing their thing, which is clutch up, make big plays when you absolutely need to and in finding ways to win the game. The Cowboys, yeah, the Giants had a shot when they shouldn't have the sh uh, shot. The Cowboys defense is just so brutal. A problem at the cornerback position, mainly because of health. They actually stopped the run for, for the most part in this game. And they were, they were, the defense was still brutal. So I worry about that going forward. And even more so now with their star edge rushers both out. Parsons won't be out for too long. Offensively, you're kind of left wanting more. I felt like if they absolutely had to, they probably could have scored more points or pushed the ball a little bit more. But wasn't overly thrilled. But there was some good things. Uh, you know, Lamb played much better like we kind of expected. The Jags find themselves here. Man, they, another team, they outplay the Texans for a portion of this game. It, the play call, fourth in, fourth and goal. They should have got in before that, but fourth and goal from the one. You go shotgun, QB draw. It's just, it's just. I said it in the last video, pure stupidity. If they get the ball in there, if they don't make a bad call, you know, they get the ball in, they probably win this game. You can't say for sure. They probably win the game against a really good Texans team. You can see the offense got going a lot more in this game. You know, finally getting Christian Kirk going. The rookie Brian Thomas Jr. looked awesome. Lawrence looked a lot better. Still could be better. Um, you know, miss Brian Thomas Jr. on what would have been a touchdown. Bigsby getting going. You know, ETN got hurt at some point, and they're still. You could feel that they got better in this game. Just the fourth quarter was not great, and that fourth down call was not great. But it's more of just calls. Like they played a lot better, and they played against a good team. So I do think they belong in this tier. And the Chargers, I factor in, they were completely depleted with star players and Herbert's limping from the start. And they outplay the Chiefs for a portion. The de I love the defense. It's a well-coached defense. They're flying around. They're making plays, playing one of the best offenses in football and making plays and, and making it a challenge for them. And that's while missing Derwin James, Joey Bosa, you know, so that it's in, in more. So it, that to me, that I was very much impressed with the defense. So that got them in this tier here. On to the B tier, the Broncos upset the Jets, so that was a big statement. Two games in a row that they beat the Bucks and the Jets. They manhandled the Bucks last week, uh, you know. So that's impressive. It makes you think the Broncos might be pretty sneaky. First two weeks usually don't mean a whole lot. They're on fire in the the back two weeks. That's a good sign. The defense looks legit. They can make plays, pass rush, getting after it. Love that, um, you know, because the statement win beating a good team and how good the defense is. You want to put them higher, but the offense still has issues. They did clutch up, I guess, when they needed to. They almost choked the game away. But, yeah, having negative seven passing yards, I know it rained. It, you know, quarterbacks have played in rain before. They usually don't have negative seven passing yards. But Bo Nix did play much better in the second half. But my point is, to be that atrocious on offense, at least through a half, that can't happen. But they do find a way to win. You know, otherwise, they'd probably be higher as well. The Bears, yeah, Probably the max they would be because there was a portion where the Rams probably outplayed them, where the Rams were constantly moving the ball, but the red zone defense was awesome. They outplayed the Rams in the second half for the most part. You see some improvement, what you want to see. You know, Williams still, you know, taking his eyes off downfield, looking at the pressure, and then, you know, missing some throws, missing a couple touchdown throws. But you could see some improvement here and there. So, so that's what you like to see, just being a clutch team in, in this game at least. Uh, you know, and figuring things out in kind of crunch time down the stretch. So I thought maybe deserving a B tier for this. But if there was, a, again, a, a part of this game where it was like, yeah, they're a little fortunate to be up. But, uh, yeah, the red zone defense was awesome. The Raiders, I put them in the B. And it wasn't pretty, but I put them in the B tier. I mean, they're missing star players. Some of the best of the best. You know, and they're down 10-0. And they don't give up. And they actually get some run game going. I know there was a fumble that was scooped and scored. But they get a little bit of run game going. Efficient enough in the passing game. And defensively clutching up when they need to. Getting after the quarterback without their star pass rusher, Max Crosby. Getting after Deshaun Watson, I should say. Um, so, that just playing tough. I just, you know, again, again, wasn't pretty. Even for the Bears, maybe it wasn't pretty. I guess the Broncos wasn't pretty, but... Given the circumstances, I, I think we give them some love here. And the Texans, I was originally going to put them in BC tier because it was a, a good chunk of this game where the Jags outplayed them. And maybe they're a, they're a little fortunate, you could say, to, to win this game. 
Um, but at the same time, maybe not. You know, they just kind of showed up in the fourth quarter. It's what good teams do. It's what good offenses do. It's what clutch, clutch teams, clutch players, well-coached teams do. And the fourth quarter was absolutely dominant from this offense, and even the defense stepped up. It's a weird game because through most of it, you're like, this is going to be an absolute shootout. And then it kind of stalled. And then one team figured it out in the fourth quarter in crunch time. It was the Texans. So showing that when the game is on the, li- on the line, hey, we got star players, Stroud, Nico Collins and Joe Mixon is not even in this game. They can go with no star players and go make plays in big time moments. And that kind of elevated them for me. And I, the Seahawks just played a tough one as well, because the defense was so, so bad in this game. Like they, 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 they there was a time when the Lions scored in one play, you know, so bad that maybe you should put them a little lower, but given how many guys are out for them in this game and they're in Detroit playing a really good team. And the offense was super explosive. A lot of yards, uh, nobody's able to run the lines, but Kenneth Walker coming off of injury is able to run the lines. I saw enough good things, uh, you know, that I, I put them in the bottom of the B tier here for Seattle. So uh, defense did not look quite the same. Again, they were very beat up, but yeah, I guess it's the thing because they've been playing some easier offenses, if you will, like in terms of opponents. Uh, so this was a much tougher. So you see, go from one extreme to another. So you know, to be determined on this defense, you know, see. Um, you know, kind of judge them going forward here. In the A tier, I put the Colts up there, outplayed the undefeated Steelers. Uh, you know, there were some injuries that, that was pretty tough, but they were able to run on them and they are able to execute. Flacco comes in, able to throw the ball, do do enough here. I know the defense gave up some yards and big plays, but I, you know, you see them taking some steps up. They're stopping to run much better the last two weeks than they were in the first couple weeks, which was probably the worst in football. Um, so I put them in the A tier. They came out and just completely, I know they almost let them come back, but they completely outplayed uh, the Steelers and the Vikings, you know, if it kept going the way it started, the Vikings would have won the week completely. Uh, but they did almost let that one slip away. It got a little scary, but you know, and I don't know what was going on with the defense at the end of the game. The defense was awesome. Once again, in the, in the beginning, uh, offensively, yeah, it felt like when the Packers really were scaring them, offense kind of clicked in the gear. It felt like they can move the ball and score and they needed to, uh, you know, they started going to Jefferson more, you know, so if they knew the Packers were going to scare them like that, maybe they could have kept going offensively, but got a little scary, but still looked like one of the better teams of football. I put the Bengals in the eighth tier. Yeah, the defense still slipped up, and you could argue, well, the de- you know, the defense was bad against the Panthers, let them score some points. You know, it wasn't completely awful, so you could say maybe a lower tier, but uh, they clutched up and they need to. How about getting that goal line stand on the first, on the first series? Like, if they don't do that, it's a completely different game. So the defense actually did some things, some big things there. And the offense was lights out, you know, using the running backs, using the receivers, Joe Burrow, offensive line. Uh, so they're, they're getting there. Bengals are doing their thing. They're getting there. They usually start a little slow. But they've actually been playing well enough, possibly offensively at least, to win the last two weeks before this. They could have three wins right now. They're maybe two. Uh, the Titans, who just played. Uh, you know, I thought they were great. Even at halftime, nine to three, it felt. If you watched that game, it felt like the Titans were outplaying them a bit more than nine and three. They had a scoop and score. It would have been a scoop and score touchdown, but the refs blew the whistle and were changing the call. Yeah, it wasn't really thrilled with the officiating in the early part of this game. I, I, and it kind of was a. It almost felt like it was hurting uh, the Titans a little bit. But and then they figured out to score touchdowns. You know, Mason Rudolph was much better than Will Levis. Pollard and Spears got going. Uh, they were moving the sticks. They were running the clock, doing their thing. Defense was lights out. I know they didn't play the strong. They didn't play the strongest possible Dolphins team, but they went to Miami in prime time. I thought they looked really, really good, and they were the worst team of football before this. So, um, yeah, they did. They did good. Lions in the A tier, even though the defense was very bad. I mean, that that wasn't the defense from the last few weeks. That they were giving up big plays left to right. They kind of clutched up at the end. Now I was surprised that the Seahawks were going to get in the end zone the last couple times, uh, but. Defense was really, really bad, so this was kind of like the highest they could be, but the offense was absurd against the Seahawks defense that's been playing very, very well under Mike McDonald. So that offense, one of the better ones in football. Jared Goff didn't incomplete a pass. I mean, the receiver's making plays. He's making plays. The running backs are just – Montgomery and Gibbs are just so damn exciting, so damn fun to watch. I mean, that gets you hyped watching those guys go to war, it feels like um, – Going to you know drive into contact, it just gets gets you hyped about the game. So I thought the offense was so good, even though the defense was so bad, but good enough uh, to in a statement win at home to be in that A tier and the best tier. The Commanders we highlighted as the number one winner in in last night's video. You can check that out. I mean, going to Arizona, playing a good. I mean, the defense stepping up is the big thing. The defense getting the pass rush stepping up, you know, m- m- causing Murray in that offense line to be off their games and. Just dominating this game offensively. Daniels, all the receivers, the running backs, even McNichols stepping up. It's just a team effort that's getting better and better. They're dangerous. 
I mean, where they stand out again for this week. I mean, the defense surprising uh, and, and showing improvement. I thought that was the number one thing. But where they stand out over the weeks, third, third down, fourth down, like third and long, even. That will win you more than just football games, folks. If you can consistently convert, consistently convert those third downs, that's like some like secret sauce right there. That that'll win you some big football games. So that that's maybe the most impressive thing. Like specifically, Ravens dominated a red hot Bills team. Uh, they look like Raven football. They look like Raven football. Derrick Henry, Lamar Jackson. I thought Lamar threw the ball very well when he had to, when he had to throw. Didn't have to throw a lot. Even some incompleted passes were good. Uh, so I thought he did, it kind of goes unnoticed that he did a good job throwing the ball even. Uh, defensively, they clutched up when they needed to. Van Noy away. Hamilton felt like he was everywhere. Um, so, yeah, one of the best outings for the re- huge statement win. Buccaneers, yeah, I know the Eagles are beat up, but the Buccaneers were beat up as well, and the Eagles' defense was not beat up. It was good last week against the Saints. The Buccaneers went out there and dominated to close this game out. It felt like instantly the Eagles marched back a little bit, but not too worried there. Uh, Bucks have been good besides a slip up against the Broncos. In the Niners, yeah, not not a super super impressive one because they played the Patriots, but they went out there and dominated this game on both sides of the ball. You expect them to kind of, kind of too, but they have been beat, they're extremely beat up, and guys dropping in this game, and they still go out and dominate. So based off their performance. Yeah, maybe why they're not in the previous video, because usually those are the videos that's like who are the most impressive. Like, but still, they do dominate this game where they are in the best tier here. So there you have it. My grades and my tiers based off week four and week four only. We do this video every single Monday night. The next video will be actual power rankings. Could we have a new number one? There's only two undefeated teams in football here. So we'll definitely have some changes. The Titans are at the bottom. They'll definitely rise up. So we will see. Can't wait for our week five content starting with picks on two. Oh, sorry, power rankings and then picks on Tuesday night. Make sure you join us, turn notifications on, and subscribe. But that'll do it for this one. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.